welcome grade 12s. Today, you will need a calculator, pen, and paper, and a table of standard electrode potentials so that we can do some calculations of the cell potential of different cells. In a galvanic cell, the redox reaction occurs spontaneously. The cell potential of a cell can be used to predict the spontaneity of the redox reaction. We can summarize the procedure to calculate the cell potential like this. Step 1. Determine which of the reactants is the reducing agent and which is the oxidizing agent. Remember that the substance that loses electrons is the reducing agent and undergoes oxidation, and the oxidizing agent gains electrons and is reduced. Step 2. Read the electrode potentials off the table of standard reduction potentials. Reduction takes place at the cathode, and the value next to the oxidizing agent is known as the E0 cathode potential. Oxidation takes place at the anode, and the value next to the reducing agent is known as the E0 anode potential. Step 3 is to substitute the values into the formula for the E0 cell. You will find this formula on the data sheet and should write it down as it appears there. Do not use any abbreviations. The fourth and final step is to interpret the answer. If the E0 cell is a positive value, it will be a spontaneous galvanic reaction. But if the answer is negative, it will indicate a non-spontaneous electrolytic reaction. Simbolelo will explain a little more and show us an example. At the end of our previous lesson, we found that when a standard hydrogen electrode is connected to a standard zinc half cell, the reading on the galvanometer is negative 0,76. We call this reading the standard electrode potential, or E0 value of the zinc half cell. It's important to note that the negative E0 value tells us that the zinc electrode is a stronger reducing agent than hydrogen gas. But chemists use the standard hydrogen electrode to measure the E0 value of many standard half cells. They collate the E0 values in a table together with the cell reactions written as a chemical equilibrium. The values are ordered from the most negative to the most positive, or from most positive to most negative. You will be given similar tables in your exams, but you need to know how to use them. So let's get started by extracting some information for a few standard half cells. Here, we've tabulated the E0 values and half cell reactions for zinc, copper, magnesium, and silver standard half cells. Yes, the zinc half cell and the magnesium half cell both have negative E0 values. Can we make a galvanic cell from these? Well spotted. The negative E0 value tells us that both these half cells have electrodes that are stronger reducing agents than hydrogen. But remember, the idea of using the hydrogen electrode as a standard is so that we can compare any two half cells to each other. Can you use the cell reactions and E0 values to predict what reactions take place in each half cell? When we connect a standard zinc half cell to a standard magnesium half cell. Don't forget, a negative E0 value tells us that the electrode of the half cell is a stronger reducing agent than hydrogen. Won't both half cells with negative E0 values be anodes when connected to the hydrogen half cell? Yes, the E0 values for both the zinc and magnesium half cells are negative and less than the value of the standard hydrogen half cell. So relative to the hydrogen half cell, the zinc electrode is the anode, but the magnesium electrode is also the anode. The difference is the E0 value of magnesium is a much larger negative value. Also, the larger negative value tells us that the magnesium electrode is a much stronger reducing agent than zinc. Oh, I get it. Will the magnesium be the anode when connected to the zinc half cell? Yes. When a magnesium half cell is connected to a zinc half cell, the magnesium is the anode. Remember, the reverse reaction is favored. 
That means we need to rewrite the oxidation half reaction from left to right as Mg goes to Mg2 plus plus two electrons. Can you predict what reaction takes place in the zinc half cell? Zinc is the less negative, or we could say more positive than magnesium. So zinc must accept electrons from magnesium. In the zinc half cell, zinc ions in the electrolyte are the oxidizing agent and take electrons to form zinc atoms. So the zinc half cell is the cathode and the forward reaction is favored and we write the reduction reaction as Zn2 plus plus two electrons goes to Zn. Can you see how to combine the two half reactions to write an overall cell reaction? We can write the oxidation half reaction down first, then the reduction half reaction. Notice that the number of electrons in both equations is the same. So the electrons cancel out and we can add the two half reactions together to get the overall cell reaction as Mg plus Zn2 plus goes to Mg2 plus plus Zn. From the equation, you should be able to see that the magnesium electrode will decrease in mass. Since the Mg solid goes to Mg2 plus in an aqueous solution, and at the same time, the zinc ions in solution form zinc atoms on the electrode. But this means that the zinc electrode increases in mass in the cell. Exactly. I'm pleased to see you are putting things together so well. Now, to complete our investigation of the magnesium zinc cell, there's one more step. We need to find out the maximum potential difference that this standard cell can produce. And we call the maximum potential difference a cell can produce the EMF of the cell. Fortunately, we can use the E0 values of the individual half cells to calculate the E0 of the cell, which is the same as the EMF of the cell. The equation for this calculation is E0 of the cell equals E0 of the cathode minus E0 of the anode. So let's use this equation for the standard magnesium zinc cell. E0 of the cathode is the E0 value of the zinc half cell which is negative 0,76 minus the E0 of the anode. I've got it. The E0 value of the magnesium half cell is negative 2,36. That's right. So we can write minus minus 2,36. And don't forget to write down all the minus signs correctly. Using a calculator, we find that the EMF of the standard magnesium zinc cell is positive 1,6 volts. The positive value we get in the answer tells us that when the magnesium zinc cell is a galvanic cell, it will produce a potential difference at standard conditions. The positive sign indicates that the reactions at the anode and cathode are spontaneous reactions. What is a spontaneous reaction? I know I've heard the term before. Good question, Namulelo. A spontaneous reaction is one that happens on its own, like iron rusting in the air. But for the purpose of a definition, a spontaneous reaction is a reaction that takes place at a particular temperature without the addition of energy. If the E0 of the cell is negative, this tells us the reaction is non-spontaneous. The cell is not able to produce a potential difference. Instead, the cell requires an external electrical energy source to supply a potential difference to force the reactions to take place. So a negative E0 for a cell tells us that the cell is not a galvanic cell, but an electrolytic cell. Thank you, Simbulelo. It is important to remember the E0 cell will be the cell potential under standard conditions. Standard conditions are a temperature of 298 Kelvin. And each electrolyte has a concentration of one mole per cubic decimeter. And finally, if any of the reactants is a gas, it needs to be at a pressure of 101,3 kilopascals. 
More of these kinds of problems can be found in the task video. Until next time, when we look at why a battery goes flat. You'll also find more information on our website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.